Yeah. We're going to get rolling right away you know, with Brian's heart. Brian, how long have we known each other? I was at TAM 1. You were at TAM 1, yeah. so we've known each other seven yeah. years. Okay. Yeah. Along with the founding members, this is how I know of the Independent Investigations Group in Hollywood, that they've been investigating claims of the paranormal with critical thinking and scientific principles since the year 2000. And it is with this group that Brian is able to promote and disseminate information about rational and scientific thinking. And this morning he's going to talk about the IIG, the Independent Investigation Group, versus the California Board of Registered Nurses. everybody. Uh, thanks, Bill, for that nice introduction. And uh, thank you all uh, 8 a.m. TAM attendees. 8 a.m. <laughs> okay. And of course, thank you to DJ Grothy and uh, the amazing James Randy for giving me this opportunity to be here. <laughs> My name is indeed Brian Hart. And uh, as Phil said, in 2000, I was one of the founding members of the Independent Investigations Group, which was once known as Hoaxbusters. Um, and I'm currently on steering. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a five-year investigation into attempting to end st state-sponsored quackery in California. Okay, so, so again, this ad appeared in the magazine. Uh, we've all seen this kind of stuff. And uh, what was unusual about this one, it says, uh, the, the company is called Clearsight, it says, um, CEU units for nurses, okay? And Wendy was all excited about that. I, you know, I honestly didn't know what a CEU was. It turns out that CEU stands for Continuing Education Unit. And nurses in California are required by law to continue their education with 30 hours every two years. Uh, CEUs are regulated by the California Board of Registered Nurses, or CBRN, I'm gonna refer to it from this point forward. Um, it's one of their jobs to oversee the education of their nurses, and to certify that both the schools and the classes that are taught are following scientific and medical progress. And this sounds like, seems like a reasonable idea uh, for keeping nurses up to date with the latest information in their field. So clear sight, <clears throat> where did these guys come from? Um, how did their obvious devotion to pseudoscience get approved in the first place? How could any school that taught laying on of hands healing even be considered for approval. We did a quick website search, you see it up here, <clears throat> and, and to check if they were issuing CEUs or if that's just some kind of false advertising. And it seemed, even on their website, that they could. So our next step was to check with <clears throat> the CBRN itself and see if this was indeed true. It was. ClearSight had been approved to issue CEUs to nurses. So <clears throat> we requested information about ClearSight from the CBRN. What they sent back seemed like a joke. Okay. <laughs> the CBRN had crossed out most of the information, especially in the area of the instructor's background and information, who would need that kind of information, right? <laughs> we persisted, <clears throat> and uh, we insisted that they send us a non-redacted copy. They eventually, but reluctantly, did. What we saw was indeed eye-opening. The instructor, Lavana Shell Novak, got her BS degree in comparative religion from Antioch University and had taken courses from such prestigious centers of learning as the Church of the Divine Man and the Church of the Divine Within, both of which I couldn't find any information about. As a matter of fact, it seemed like Ms. Novak was not a nurse herself, which is not particularly a problem. Uh, which looks like she had had no scientific or medical training at all. Yet according to the CBRN's own rules and bylaws, certification must contain content which includes the application of scientific knowledge to patient care. We sent several letters to the CBRN pointing at this discrepancy with ClearSight. Was this some kind of mistake? Was it a one-time oversight? Or is it standard practice to allow pseudoscience to be taught in the classes? We did get back eventually some form letters from them that simply ignored our questions. So what's our next step? <clears throat> well, we then realized <clears throat> that we're in California, the CBRN is a, is a, is a state organization, um, public funded. They meet publicly several times a year. So why not go to them in person? So a group of IIG members, including our own chairman, Jim Underdown, went to one such meeting and politely explained to them how their system was 
flawed. Okay? <laughs> we even gave them some suggestions as to how to close the loopholes that would prevent another clear site from being certified. Another year rolled by. We attended meeting after meeting and asked again and again and waited for change. The board thanked us each and every time and told us that our suggestions were under advisement. Okay? Nothing happened. We were ignored. Skeptics, we hate to be ignored. <laughs> so the IIU decided to switch tactics. If we couldn't beat them, why not join them? We had copies of the ClearSight application. Why not create our own school with our own courseware and see if we can get certified by the CBR to teach classes in California? So our questions were, you know, would we have to rent a building? Would we have to put up a sign somewhere? Would we have to hire <coughs> teachers, create manuals, all that kind of nasty stuff? So <clears throat> submitted for your approval, the California Foundation for Institutional Care. I present to you all, see if I care. <laughs> With only this simple website, a legitimate business telephone number, and the Center for Inquiries business address itself, we were on our way. We sent in our application along with a $200 non-refundable fee. And that also gave us a little bit of, of, of nervousness. We were like, oh, no, $200. Okay, we'll give it a shot. We held our breath. Um, would, uh, would they accept us or would they rejoin or, or, or accept us or reject us. So, on the screen, what you see right now is literally the courseware that we sent to the CBRM. Okay? Um, I'm going to talk about these topics in depth in a moment. Just hold on to your hats. Okay, so we held our breath. We're going, okay, what are they going to do? They gonna, they, they, it was a, couple, a little bit back and forth with them. They had a couple questions. You know, is the address correct? Okay. Is this really your telephone? Yes, it is. Okay. So on August 26, 2008, CFI CARE got approval to teach and certify nurses in California. Here is our certification. <laughs> By all accounts, we had already proven our points. No one seemed to be at the helm of this organization. But then we got a, another, perhaps more devious idea. Let's put on an actual class and see what happens. Okay. So we advertised the class in several local hospitals, stuck up some stuff on bulletin boards. We set up the Steve Allen Theater at CFI in Los Angeles, and on April 15, 2008, we began to teach our class. <laughs> our first topic, you saw on the screen there a minute ago, feng shui. Um, the, the, this, was, uh, this was taught by uh, the IIG's Karen Kenzie, who came up with a lot of these ideas, by the way. Uh, who actually is certified to teach in California. We figured, well, we'll have an actual teacher up there. But her degree is in architecture, not feng shui. Okay. I don't think anyone here would disagree that uh, if you're sitting in a chair that's facing a wall, it would affect your mood a certain way. Or that sitting in a room, painting a certain color, might also affect your mood. But the question is, is that science? 